YouTubers and subscribers, RoseRed17 here, and this is Eden Zero, Volume 5, Chapters 33 through 41. And you're wondering why I sound depressed? Well, it's because I am not too fond of this art because I think it's a bore, and the only thing I did like from this volume are the last maybe two chapters, as the ending was pretty good. But I would have to read through the other chapters just to get to the one sections that I like. This is a similar feeling I had when I first watched the fairy tale Phil arc key the story heavens i never particularly liked that arc and the only good thing that came out for me is the last episode where you see that beautiful nalo moment and for the first time anyone other than natsu dragneel saving the world the rest i couldn't stand but then i watched shannon from anime america and she mentioned this is one of her favorite arcs and then i realized other people saying that this is a good arc probably one of the best fillers oh they say it's great so i must have missed something so i decided to watch it again when Funimation came back to the series. And yeah, I can see why people like it as there are some excellent moments and fighting scenes that I did enjoy. But I still can't bring myself to like it for reasons. It's the same exact feeling I have for this volume. And once I reread each chapter, I'm not gonna talk about it too much until I get to the good one, which is the last chapter. So here we go, I guess. So the beginning of this volume is chapter 33, with Shigi on top of the building that's disappearing in the background. There is a fight going on, Shigi gets his hair cut short, thank god because I think it looks better that way. The bad guy attacks the crew, yeah I forget his name so I'm just gonna call him Scythe Guy. He attacks the team and then Shigi attacks Scythe Guy by throwing a broken tower at him. But Scythe Guy split the building tower in half as he mentioned Drake and Joe and a woman named Maria and then retreated. Honestly, Scythe Guy is kind of boring character to me. And if I ever see a rematch between him and Shiki, I will no doubt skip the whole battle scene. The villagers thank the crew for getting rid of Scythe Guy, even though he left on his own. Shiki and the others find Herman at the end of the chapter. Shiki introduced himself and willing to take Herman back to Eden Zero. But Herman refused to go because she'd rather stay in the digital world than live among humans again. Okay, this is what I'm talking about here. The main characters find someone essential and that individual doesn't want to leave because of practical issues. Now, I was not too fond of Herman at first because of her insubordination, but after reading all these chapters and getting her backstory, I understood why she's acting cold towards the crew. But we will get to her story after reviewing through the other chapters, which I am willing to skip and go straight to the climax where the exciting chapter is. But if I did that, I will have regrets for the later volumes, so for that, I will press on. The crew were surprised about Herman's rejection until Shiki remembered when his robot family turn on him. Still, then suddenly the village was attacked by creatures that led by another character that I am going to forget. Okay, let's fast forward here. The monsters attack after a few pages, Shiki take out most of them, but then he decided to leave them to his teammates because he's gonna go after Hermit. So Rebecca and Happy are ready to fight off the monsters, and I would have added Harmon out to the battle, but then she ends up ditching everyone, and she also ends up betraying them. Hamura meets up with Scythe Guy, and I know his name by now, but I don't really don't care at this point, so he's going by Scythe Guy. Shiki flies away with Hermit in his arm, as she looks like she doesn't really give a crap. Shiki fights out the flying creatures, and Hermit noticed that he has Ziki's powers. Hermit still believes that humans don't have hearts, but Shiki explains that some humans don't, and they can be cruel, but not all of them are heartless. And while this conversation is going on, there's Rebecca and the others flying off the monsters and then there's a surprising twist. The creature that the crew has met before ends up saving a little girl. Now there are some scenes in these chapters that are likable to read. Like during these panels when the two monsters are arguing with each other and then Shiki comes along, kicks down the bird man and then goes after the others. But then Scythe Guy comes back with an army ready to attack the villagers. But then this significant guy defends them and ends up defeated. But then Shiki gets injured after saving the little girl. And the person who shot him turns out to be Hamura and thus ending the chapter. Okay, in the next chapter, it's explained that Hamra didn't portray the crew. It turns out that she was transferred into a jail cell and it took her a whole day to escape. But enough about that, let's get to the part where Scythe Guy ends up killing monsters around him and then attacks the crew once again. And there is that rematch, so moving along. The others discover that the enemy is using cheat codes, and Hermes suggests that they should also use it as well. Meanwhile, Hamra is chasing after her fig and is discovered to be a woman named 
Jamira, who is an agent from the spy government called Gia. And I will admit, her ether powers are impressively interesting. Her target is Drake and Joe, and she disguised herself as one of Scythe Guy's allies to gain information. But now that her identity is discovered, she is willing to take down Hamura. But this war woman isn't going down that easy. As the bullet she used to shoot Hamura, it reflects back at her, but she managed to log out before the shell touched her. Now, it isn't explained how Amira's ether gear works in these chapters, but it is explained later on in the series, but I will like to explain it now because why not? Her power is sort of like a mirror, where she can change herself into any person she comes in contact with, their appearance, their personality, and also their memories. To me, that is pretty cool, but also kind of creepy in other ways. But enough spoiling, back to the current chapter. So to take down Scythe Guy, Wiz decided to cheat by using his ether gear, knowing he'll be banned from the game. But Wiz never pictures herself as a gamer. As she keeps getting thrashed by Scythe Guy, Wiz tried to decode the program, but then Hermit badmouth about his skill to program as she used her own skill to take out the foe by removing Scythe Guy invisibility program and then turn Shiki into a monster. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, and it's also kind of funny that both Hermit and Scythe Guy are equipping and undoing Shiki's armor, and he's just standing there looking confused. It also seemed to equip Rebecca in a bikini. Oh, come on, really? But then Scythe Guy used a cheat code that Hermit can't seem to stop, so Shiki used his own ether gear and the power of friendship. Okay, I might have got a little carried away with that, but we all know that speech is going anywhere. Hermit explains that Shiki's ether gear is more powerful than the planet's defense system, and even if Side Guy absorbs a planet's defense state, it wouldn't be enough because its defense is less than a thousand. Shiki's gravity ether gear is higher than that, and so that is how the enemy is taken down. Not a bad comeback in this chapter, and seeing Hermit's ability to program in is pretty awesome. The village is saved, Hamura returns, and the Beast Guy is still alive, and Shiki stares at Hermit asking her to come home to eat a zero. Okay, now these are the chapters that I have been waiting to talk about, and it explains Hermit's backstory and her issues with humans. In chapter 39, we see a flashback of Zigi and the Shining Stars. The Demon King gave the girls her freedom, and Hermit decides she wants to help the human race. In the present, she wakes up, falls to the ground due to lack of strength, and then wandered off into her own privacy, as they notice that her heart didn't come back with her. The others come back as well, and after the conversation about Hermit, they get hacked by a hacker who turns out to be the scythe guy from the digital world and takes control of the ship, which told everybody that Hermit is the only one who can stop the hacker. But because because of her mental state, she refuses, and so Shiki and Rebecca are willing to go talk to her. Now here is where the story of Damaged Little Hermit begins, and honestly, it's a dark and sad one to the point where I felt sympathy towards this character. She wants to help the humans as it makes her happy, but only to get backstabbed by the people that she helped as they were using her to create a cannon to destroy a planet where the robots live. The crew on Eden Zero wanted to stop the ship from blowing up as they tried to repair the damage, but they had no luck. Now the last chapter of the volume is both disturbing and heartwarming. First off, the problematic part is seeing Hermit in pieces as she's being used as a test subject. Imagining this happened to a human being. There are people out there that use other people as a test subject, and it's hard to watch. In the end, she's found by a government army, but then winds her off not looking back. Now for the heartwarming part of the chapter. Rebecca starts off talking to Hermit about everyone on the ship cares about robots, and told her about what Shiki said to her, that he does he doesn't see people like robots or humans, he looks into their hearts. Now it's Shiki's turn to speak. Even though he admit he does not understand what Hermit went through, but her tears are the reason that Shiki isn't giving up on her. He doesn't care if she doesn't trust him, but he told her to trust herself and to ask her what she wants to do. And with those tears shedding, she said she wants to be friends with them. This scene almost made me cry myself. After learning what happened in the past, in those friend speaks turned my feelings towards Hermit from dislike to favorite. And now it's time for the funny part. Hermit activates her programming ability as she tricks the hacker into thinking it was a cannon when it was actually fireworks. In this panel, we see the crew giving out silly financial expressions. In the end, they all laugh and Hermit's smile returns. 
This ending gave me back my own smile after reading the boring chapters of this volume. But like I said before, I didn't like the volume to begin with, and it seemed promising at first, and it gave out a satisfactory ending. But in the middle of it all, it just seems dull. I know I mentioned this before at the start of the video, but this volume reminds me of the fairy tale filler our key the story heavens. When I saw the first episode, it seemed promising enough for me to give a chance to watch it, and maybe even like it. But after four episodes later, it just ruined it for me. Because in the middle of it all, all I see are the Gilmaids splitting up to go on a treasure hunt to find ancient items until they found that they were not supposed to find the items after discovering what they will do. They did all this because of the emotional, in denial, damsel in distress who wants to secede the will of her deceased father, but ends up being betrayed by the one family member she has left, gets kidnapped to be used as a sacrifice. Yeah, my problem with that arc was Lucy herself. I know she isn't my favorite character in the series, but after watching Phantom Lord, I started to see a side of her that expired me. But that arc just seemed to ruin her character, and I always thought it wasn't her best one, but what saved it for me is what she did at the end. These are honestly one of my favorite moments in Fairy Tale, and reason because this is the first time someone other than Natsu that will save the world, and having that Nalu moment is one of the best one I've seen so far. Now with Eden Zero Volume 5, it's the same way, where it starts out where you think you're going to have a fun book to read, but won't get to the good parts until the end, because in the middle of it all, you just see everything you don't appreciate. I can skip a lot of this and won't miss a thing, except for the part where Amira reveals herself as a spy, but other than that, it's just saving a village from an evil villain. But the ending was the best part. It tells a story about a heartbroken individual with a tragic past and refusing to help anybody else, but thanks to the heart-to-heart -heart moment that individual saved by the people that care about her. This might be my least favorite volume in Eden Zero, and Key to Story Heavens is my least favorite arc in Fairy Tale. They both have excellent scenes somewhere in the middle, but have fantastic endings that save both of them from my hatred. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment down below about your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe. Rose Red 17 out.